consist of different steps we are going to discuss over here first thing we need really need to take care over here that is oil and gas process control because this term oil and gas automation trainings refer to the things that are very much in oil and gas sector starting from oil as oil and gas process control first thing we need to know what is oil and gas process we will start with oil and gas process and then go ahead with the controlling that process with different projects you will see how to control uh, oil and gas process so if somebody want to get knowledge about oil and gas process control this will this course will be a plus for him then there is a one terminology when you talk about instrumentation radar tank gauging systems these are very popular when you talk about oil and gas sector because when you having a companies like shell or other refineries they are having a lot of radar tank gauging systems to measure up these are normally for the storages and then we will talk about well head operation and well head uh, control what is well head basically uh, first thing we need to uh, start from here just hold on. so what is well head well well head sits on the top of actual oil and gas well leading down to the reservoir and that well head consist of a lot of things to those people who are really interested to work on well areas or in a rig side they must have a knowledge about well head operation what is the opening and closing sequence of well head and then we will talk about well head instrument other walls there there is emergency shut down system over there that terms should be clear and this course consist of well head instrumentation also then when we talk about oil and gas then there is a storage concept always then we will talk about oil tank level control application and we will make a application by using a plc that will control the level of tank automatically and then there is pressure and flow control when you talk about oil and gas that as well as the term in oil and gas sector as well as instrumentations are concerned four main terms pressure level flow temperature and these are the four main com main components level temperature flow and the pressure so then esd control what is emergency shutdown system and how to make a emergency shutdown system by own like we having a emergency shutdown system that are made by some companies but we in this course we will make this simulation and we will try to uh, execute the operation of esd then the boiler boiler is very important part of oil and gas sector then we will talk about boiler control over here what does that boiler control mean boiler having different parameters to control when you have a boiler you may have a low water cut off these are the terminologies we are going to use first thing is to introduce these terminologies to you all of the guys that what are the different control parameters in boiler and what is the operation of the boilers how boilers works the working principle of the boiler and how we can control the control parameters over there the process parameters and then there is a one another project that is about drilling machine control this project consists of a drilling machine and that is to be controlled with a plc program and then we will talk about pid control what does that mean pid control you know about that the pids are very famous when you talk about advanced plc courses pid is the first term you need to go ahead with that then we will talk about analog signal handling in a plc like how to get analog signals we will do it by formula also and we will do it by functions also in plcs then uh, it's not the end of that course a lot to be discussed more like we will talk about master terminal units and remote terminal units that are a part of scada systems and how to communicate communicate mtu and rtu with each other and then we will talk about scada web server how to make a scada as a web a scada web server and how to get the hmi of your scada through web 
and then this course is not yet ended we will go ahead with profibus basics that consists of profibus planning and the profibus uh, configurations also then we will talk about modbus rtu and modbus tcp what uh, e, what are the, these two terms its introduction and leading to a scada communication with the modbus rtu and modbus tcp that will be a part of that course then there is very important concept that is robotics control there will be a one session on robotics control we will control the robot and that robot will be a like a robot that is picking up work from one conveyor and placing it to another conveyor when we will go ahead when we will elaborate that topic you will understand what i am talking about because this is just our view of all what we are going to discuss in that particular training then we will go ahead with traffic light controllers and we will make a traffic light control as a project so that you can understand the digital world if somebody don't have a knowledge about digital uh, plc you know programming then this will be a golden chance for him to get the basic knowledge also and we will talk about hmis vincc flexible hmi that will be a hmi we are going to program over here we will communicate vincc with plc and we will make some uh, hmis on it so that you can get understanding how to make these hmis and we will also communicate this vincc flexible with modbus rtu and modbus tcp as we are communicating our scada station also in this edas course we also communicate our mod uh, vincc flexible with modbus rtu and modbus tcp and then we will go ahead with a very important topic that is subcon dcs training also so plc is is just going to end it's advanced level of the plc is just going to end and now it's starting up hmi is also and now we will progress with the subcon dcs subcon dcs in subcon dcs we will use ecs 100 dcs this is not the only software in dcs we are going to use we will go ahead with the training on abb dcs freelance 900f and the dvd will be posted to your home address by abb's officials and then then we will talk about the vintier scada this is the scada software we are going to use and the five industrial projects will be a part of that sessions so this is the course contents now starting from oil and gas process what we are, we are going to discuss in this oil and gas process first thing we will go ahead with the exploration and uh, this, this what is this its exploration is a series of surveys it's a series of surveys and uh, include processing prospecting systematic system, and drilling activities that takes place before the development of the field is finally decided and then we will talk about the upstream operation it's a just overview other complete details will be a part of course upstreams we will discuss over here in this course what does that up, upstream means upstream typically refer to the all facilities for production and stabilization of oil and gas the reservoirs and drilling communities often uses upstreams for well head control and well completion and reservoirs only and then downstream of the well head as a production or processing so exploration and upstream productions together referred as enp called exploration and production so that what are these terms that will be a part of that course so that if somebody want to get a job or somebody want to excel his skills about these terminologies and uh, he can hey uh, we will have a golden chance on that course then we will talk about midstream also when we talk about midstream what does that mean midstream broadly defined as gas treatment lng production and degasification plants and oil and gas pipeline systems then we will talk about refining how to starting from the oil and gas process first first i want to introduce what is the process a series of mechanical and chemical operation that produce something is called process and when you having a well that well having a definitely when you having a well you will get out from a well a oil and then that oil consists of several things in it now by several things what i mean first thing can be a oil for sure for can be a gas 
and it can be a water it can be a sulfur as a part of the, the, you can say that toxic gases are also part of that wells so then this this all things that you have that will pass through that uh, that oil will pass through several stages to get oil in it uh, and to get oil in different categories we have refineries that having you know doing the all operations to refine the oil and it's separating all the system like refineries where oil and cond condensates are produced into the marketable products which define specifications as gasoline diesel diesel or feed stock for the petrochemical industries so what refineries are doing they are separating they are separating different oil categories also then there is a different uh, separated units also to be a part of that session separated what is that doing for example as i said earlier oil coming from the well consist of water consist of gas consist of oil gas and water mainly and then sulfur also so these all things need to be separated to get everything you know in a separate identity so we will pass this oil first into the separator units separator unit having uh, you know uh, capabilities to separate oil gas water and then we have a sulfur recovery unit to extract the sulfur for example if we want to get that. then we will talk about heat exchangers also that will be a part of that session complete discussions on that and then we will talk about compressors and then we will talk about onshore and offshore operations of oil and gas industry what does that mean on onshore and offshore everybody have knowledge about that onshore means on the land operations on the land offshore means right in the middle of the sea for example the operations in the middle of sea so these are the terms that will be a part of session so that any person who don't have any knowledge about that he can get the knowledge about this oil and gas automation industry then we will talk about the preliminary plcs the plc in the plc what is the plc basically plc is a digital computer used for automation of process industry so it's a brain of automation industries like if you having a oil and gas industry you having a process industry like fertilizer industry you having a chemical industry you having other any cement industry so all the operation is controlled by controller so in controller we have wall plc controller so it's a micro processor based industrial controller whose function is determined by store program whatever logic you will give to that plc it will work on it so the main function of the microprocessor is to analyze the data coming from the field sensor and what i what that mean a field sensor like field sensor may be a temperature sensor can be a flow sensor can be a level sensor anything can it can be a digital value coming from the switches proxy switches and other other things so the signals are coming towards plc and based on these signals plc we have given a program on it so based on that program it will decide what action need to be performed so what does that is doing the main function of process is to analyze the data coming from the field sensor through input module make decisions based on the user program whatever you write in it whatever you burn in it based on that it will generate output and output is again uh, provided to the final control element when i talk about final control elements i mean walls and motors like that the plc works by looking at inputs and depending on its status turning on and off and can be uh, you know it's really, it for, for example if we having a analog signal coming from the field then uh, it's also getting the signals from analog module input module so complete discussion about plc hardware architecture will be a part of that session and then um, we will talk about the plc programming there are two separate courses one is the plc in scada system it and automation academy is offering and this is the latest course for advanced professionals so uh, anybody who want to get a basic course he have opportunity to talk uh, to get registered with the plc in scada systems training so now what does that mean for example we having this uh, this unit over here we having a temperature transmitter over here that is uh, sending the signals to analog input mo mo modules and now the controller in the controller what is the first thing there are different terms we are we use maybe you 
uh, don't have used before. The set point. Set point is the what value you want to achieve by controller. You will give the value and the operator is going to give that value to the peak controller that I need this temperature. Like for example, if you write it 100, then controller have a responsibility to make it 100. If it's not making 100, if it's less, it will regulate it by its final control elements and by its logic operation. So what we are having over here, set point first thing. And then what is PV over here? PV is a process value. What does that mean? Process value is what is the actual value coming. For example, if temperature sensor is a place and it's getting the temperature, if temperature is 100 in the field, then it's 100. The value is 100. That is a PV. So we will compare set point and PV. We will get an error between these two signals by controller. If there is an error, then the controller have responsibility to generate CV. So based on CV, you will regulate your final control element. You will adjust your wall. You will adjust, uh, for example, if you're having a less uh, value, then you will regulate, it, you regulate your wall based on that. Complete discussion on that, how to control the wall, then we are part of that session also. How to control a boiler operation? This is just like that. Uh, this uh, particular example will be a part of that course. So now, major components and of the PLC. Processor, first thing in it. When we talk about the PLC, PLC is the brain of automation. When we talk about the processor, processor is a brain of the PLC. So go ahead with power supply. Every device, electronic device, need a power to power up. Then we have PLC. If we have a PLC, we need a power supply to power it up. So we're having a PLC. Power supply. And then go ahead. Programming device. What does that mean? Computer we are using to program that particular PLC is a programming device. Input module. Input module is interface between your field elements, your field sensors, your field switches, and your PLC. So what does that is doing? Is getting the signals from the PL from the sensors, and input module is sending it towards the processor. It's the interface between your processor and your field, sen field sensors and your limit switches. Then there comes the output module. What is that that output module is doing? It's sending the output to your final control element. Now, when we having an input module, what is the function if in the case that value is coming from the analog sensor, what will be its operation? First operation will be to convert that value to digital if it is an analog value. So in input module, we having an analog to digital converter. If I know English, if you don't, if you are a French guy, if I speak in English, maybe you can't understand that because you don't know about that language. So like that, we having a process that knows about digital only. So if you want to communicate analog with that digital processor who knows about only uh, analog, uh, about uh, digital, then it will be a problem. So what we are doing in input module, if this signal coming from the field is an analog in input module it is converting it to a digital that's why we having an input analog module to convert it so it's sending the digital form of it into processor and now processor knows about digitals and whatever it give you output to output module that also be a digital value so in output module you have a again conversion in digital to Analog because your final control elements are operated on analog values like 0 to 10 volt, 4 to 20 milliampere. These are the final control element signals going on. So, a typical process control system. This is you can see over here starting from the field devices, field IOs, control or safety. You can see also the con electrical control. You can see the engineering stations, you can see the servers, you can see the operator stations, you can see the remote stations also. So these are the field buses over here also you can see. So what is the field buses and these are the details are that we are part of next slides. A process control system we use to monitor data and control equipment on the plant. Very small installation may you have, you know, you may have pneumatic controls 
system. But when you talk about 200, like if you're having a 4,000 even, if you're having more than 4,000 4, signals, if you're having a more than 2 lakh signals, what you will do, then you need to have a dedicated distributed control system. What is the, what, if we have a PLC, what is the need of distributed control system? A very important question when you talk about very simple, but very important. So the PLC is a controller. We having two distribution systems, two main architecture control system. One is centralized control. One is the distributed control. When I talk about centralized control, if have, it have only one controller, operating all and executing all the operation. If that controller fails, your all operation fail. Now, when you talk about distributed control system, then you will distribute your work into multiple controllers. What you will do? You will distribute your work to multiple controllers, right? What does that mean? For example, have an oil and gas industry where we having a different units like sulfur recovery unit, we having a a mine unit, we having a separator units, and we having a lot of other units. So all the units are separate identities. If you put one controller as in charge of all the operation, if that controller fails, your sulfur recovery unit fail, your a mine unit fail, your separation unit fail, everything fails, everything collapses. <coughs> so that gives the concept of distributed control systems. Distributed control system is distributed to multiple controllers. Your task is divided to multiple controllers. So if one controller fails, the associated process with that controller is, is only going to affect. Okay. So the purpose of this system is to read the values from the large number of the sensors and programs to monitor the process and control walls, switches and other things. It's, so what is the, that? It, it is the same. It is getting the values from your process environment and then based on the controller logic when you give it in it it, it will decide some uh, some you know uh, your final regulation based on that and then your final control elements will be do that regulation what will be the order by your pcs system so then we will talk about process control system components when we talk about the field instruments, it are it, these are the instruments that are like, for example, we having a temperature sensor, we having a level tr transmitter, we having a, a flow transmitter, we having a flow recorder, we have a gauge. These are all instruments. These all then we having a field bus. If you want to get the data from field instrument to your uh, PLC, then you need a field field bus. So field bus is basically acting as as the communication uh, path between these two uh, controller and your instruments and then we talk about the controllers controllers are you know about that we having different controllers as we discuss about the plc is one of the type of the control so then we having the servers so what is the need of servers servers are there to store the values like for example what we are getting from the field if somebody want to get the data for example what was the trend of the current in last year he can get from the server because servers are there to store the data and then we having a client units we having a ccr control room and then we what is the well control we will that will be a part this is a just our view as i talked before this is just our view. we will go ahead in detail in these terms cc and then we will go ahead with the real well control well control may include automatic start up and shut down on the well so for example this is very as I take the, I talk about that before that we will discuss about in detail about web head instrumentation. What is the sequence of opening of the well and what is the sequence of shutting of the well and what is the sequence of the closing of the well? This all theory will be a part of that session and there will be some demonstration videos so you can get an idea about that. We will implement emergency shutdown systems also over here. Okay, so if there is a flow insurance uh, that that is uh, part of that that flow insurance ensures the flow from the wells and in pipes and uh, the, the, your it is just ensuring the flow from your wells and of your pipelines and uh, it's also ensuring your pressure your pressure is correct 
that is what you want or something else your flow is correct your temperature is correct that is also the you know there is there is a part of the, the the mechanism that we are going to develop for well control and we will make up for one code in plc that will detect everything in it so what is a safety system and i talk about safety system now there are many undesirable events in the process when you talk about you don't want to be happen these events but it normally happens so that should be protected these events should be protected so the function of safety system is to take control and prevent an undesirable event when the processor and the, uh, your facility are no longer operated within the normal operation condition for example if plc is not operating what will be your mechanism to stop the operation for example if there is a blast there is any activity that is wrong in your well head if it will stuck and it will just destroy your well what will be your process how you will stop the toxic gas coming out from the well and how you will uh, stop all the operation that there is this is the emergency shutdown system to handle that emergency conditions highly critical shutdown levels are required for emergency shutdown system to operate and there is another system that is called psd system psd system is a process shutdown system to handle a non normal but less critical less critical than the than the, than the shut, shutdown level and then there is a fire and gas detection system to detect fire and gas leakage so what are the safety system just above you this is a very important systems when you talk about well head operation this safety system is a very important concept when you talk about the process oil and gas process control plant emergency shutdown shutdown system we have a part of that so function of the safety system is to just ensure that your undesirable even uh, desirable event doesn't work that that doesn't come and then it, it, when the process and facility is not longer operating with the normal condition the, the function of safety system is to take the control and prevent prevent your undesirable event that in consist of two different things in it emergency shutdown system emergency shutdown system is very highly critical situation that comes due to any undesirable for example there is a blast or anything that is there is a, some uh, there is some bad weather condition due to which the your well is not in correct position then this emergency shutdown system will be activated process shutdown system in uh, to handle non non normal but less critical Uh, situation then the shutdown level so then the fire and uh, gas detection systems are to detect the fire and gas leakage from your wells go ahead just see that what's going on in a well head site so the field instruments are there to measure up the different things from the from the well they they can be flow that can be a pressure these things are these things there are the field instrument to measure up that and then this go, going to our rtu and rtu is sending it to rtu radio and it's transmitted to yagi antenna that is and then it's communicated to uh, your master station and you get that signal from on the antenna that is at your master station and you are getting that to, through master radio and modem is there because you are having different when you use modem modem is just for the conversion of two different medias normally these kind of systems so this is just our view we will talk about in detail how the signals progress from the instrument to your master station that will be a part of that what are the antennas and how you can go ahead with that this is basically uh, leading to our scatter systems concepts and this will be a building or uh, sessions of the scatter system that we are going to discuss in upcoming sessions so what are the scatter systems scatter is basically supervisory control and data acquisition system there is two terms over here one is data acquisition and that is supervisory control data acquisition refers to the like for example you are getting the signals for, for example plcs are doing the data acquisition system rdus are taking taking care of the data acquisition responsibilities and then supervisory control is on your master machine master station and then we will talk about the scatter system of which will come in the most national critical problem. where exactly we use this scatter system in gas pipelines in oil and gas refineries in oil and gas sector plants and in transportations 
we are using that and we are using in electrical utilities also so a scatter system are intended to provide a man home and machine uh, home and operator with updated real time information about the current state of the mode processes so now if we have a dcs what is the need of scatter systems for example if you having a four plants your oil fact your oil company is bigger you having a four plants all need to be you need one guy to monitor all the operation are you having a one head office or you have a one central location to see what's going on in all your industry that leads to the concept of scada system scada system is a ip based it can be accessed through web it can be accessed through any source like for example it can be accessed through uh, your uh, you know uh, wireless systems also so scada systems is the simplest form of the uh, you you can have a mtus there you can have a rtus there what does that mtu mean is a master terminal unit the master terminal unit is the heart of any scada system our modes processly uh, we talk about more precisely about that this is a brain of uh, you can scada systems and mtu is operated through a man machine interface there is an hmi and people are sitting They are, they are seeing all the processes, and they say they are regulating all the things. If what if something went wrong, or if they want to uh, ensure some other condition, if they want to set some other parameter, they will use MTUs. Okay. So MTU is the heart of any SCADA system. So at your master SCADA system, at your master station, you must have an MTU to gather up the information coming from the RTUs. So then we will go ahead. What is RTU? an rtu is instrument that monitors our more uh, more physical parameters at the specific point in the piping system or anywhere like for example if you having different temperature level pressure flow temperature anything coming uh, from your field rtu is getting get, gathering that all information and then passing it then passing this information to your mt by using different channels like we can use uh, different communication paths that will be a part of next slide also its function is similar to the gauge or meter but it's capable of passing via modem now in rtus we have two different things in it one is intelligent rtu one is non intelligent rtu intelligent rtu is something referred as plc plc can be rtu so such as the such a device contains one or more chips that can be programmed to enable the rtu like what is the intelligent rtu intelligent mean that you can give some logic to it like you can give to plc even plc can be an rtu so you give the logic to that intelligent rtu it will regulate based on it will make uh, you know your decisions based on that it will perform your control tasks in the field so relieving the mtu of some of its duties so what is rtu intelligent uh, rtus are doing such devices contain one or more chips that can be programmed to enable the rtu to perform certain computational and uh, co and control tasks in the field relieving the mtu of some of its duties so you got the point and there is a simple non intelligent rtu simple non intelligent rtu is just a collector it's collecting the data and passing it to mt that's it not it's not doing any controlling activity uh, operation with within it so they are be having two types of rtus now the communication between your mtu and rtu in on for example if you want to communicate rtu and mtu you need to have a different systems like for example you can use public switch phone system you can use fiber optics you can use cell cellular phone system you can use micro wave satellites radios and you can use dedicated hardware systems also hardware systems also you can have a vhf or uhf radio systems also that will be a part of that session uh, that in communication session we will talk about this all terminologies how we can communicate our rtu with the mtu through public switch phone system how we can communicate through fiber system and how we will communicate through cellular telephone system and how we will communicate through 
you can say the radio wave system then you we, we can we communicate through microwave and satellite so just difference between plc dcs and crf plc is a controller and when you having it's it's based on centralized control and dcs is a controller it's a it's not only one controller it's a multiple controllers and it's distributing and it's used for long uh, for large ios and plc is for small number of ios and when you talk about scada and dcs system scada is ge geographically dispersed when you having a law for example if you want to see your uh, system from um, other country you have if you have a live ip you can see it so from anywhere from the world by your scada systems and then dcs and plc both are factory center both are factory center these are on factories they when you talk about outside from the factory outside from the your plant and outside from your field then you will go ahead with the scada concept and then you talk about communication the number of communication scada is long distance because definitely if you talk about scada your plants are geographically dispersed for example there are many companies who are having uh, their plants in different countries so these if they all need to be communicated they need if you information need a long distance to be traveled so then we will talk about dcs and plc dcs and plc are high speed and they are low distance because it's on land environment local area network in term of control if you talk about scada is for subsidiary control and plc is for closed uh, closed feedback loops so hope you get point thank you very much for listening and for more information about that course you can register that course on uh, and by by paying the fee of uh, 500 us dollar that will be a complete course consisting of all the plc dcs and scheda terms and whatever we discuss that will be a part of that particular course hope you understand what i mean so now you can unmute your voices and it will be pleasure to talk to you all if you didn't have any question that will be highly appreciated